Hi, my name is Oistan and I'm trying to become a bookworm. And in that process, I hope to inspire you to do the same. And this might just be my most inspiring video ever. Because in this video, I'll talk about the books that have inspired me the most, or influenced me the most, or been the books that are hard to forget, or made the biggest impact. You choose. So even though I haven't read that much in my life earlier, which is why I have this channel, I always have read one to two books a year. And over the course of the year, that amounts to a fairly good stack of books. And in this video, I picked out the four that has the biggest influence on me. And of course, I do urge you to read these books and one in particular, but I'll come back to that one later. First, we have the story of Hermann the Norwegian. It's about Hermann Saknowitz which was a Norwegian Jew in Auschwitz and other concentration camps. It was released in 1976. Out of 780 Norwegian Jews, only nine survived Auschwitz and he was one of them. The only thing that kept him going was the thought of one day being able to tell the story of the people who died and himself. In many ways, Hermann survives the concentration camps because he plays the trumpet and then he could join a band in Auschwitz and there he wasn't beaten as much and he was fed maybe one potato more now and then and that made him survive or was a big part of him surviving I should say. So the book is basically talking about his life in the concentration camps and what he sees and experiences and I would say it's with haunting realism that this book is being told and of course with the brutality that no fiction can ever match in many ways. The book and the language just grabs hold of you and does not let go until you finish the book. I read this book when I was about 14 years old. It was a part of a compulsory reading list in my school. And at the time I also played in a marching band and that made me maybe connect even closer to the story. And of course, World War II is a big part of the education system and we talk a lot about it. In that period, you have sort of dragged into World War II and all the things that happened. I thought that was really intriguing. And when I read this book, it sort of just made a huge impact, I should say. Hamann sort of tells the story to a narrator that helps him write the story. This happens in the 70s because it was too tough talking about it before then, during the story, they take several breaks, sometimes over a couple of months, because it's too hard to continue telling the story. That tells you something about the content of the book, because it is a book that will hit you hard. And it's a book that I'll never forget, I think. Directly translated, the Norwegian title is It Also Concerns You, and it's thought of for future generations, that they also know that this has happened and these gruesome things could happen again and I think that's an important message. And now over to something that is very much more joyful and something that I read around the time that I read Hermann's book and that's Beatles by Lars Hobe Kestensen, one of the Norwegian authors I've read the most. And as you might gather it's about Beatles, the band and someone else. Because this book is about four young boys growing up in Oslo in the 50s and 60s and you sort of follow their story alongside Beatles' story. So if they're not doing that well, Beatles is not doing that well either. And this is the first book in a trilogy where I've actually read all the three books because when I grew up I loved the Beatles more than anything I would say. If you look at the front cover here you can see that it's a mix of Beatles fan art and album covers and some political statements. And this describes the book quite well. It's a coming of age story about four kids that were born in 51. Some of them get quite political, some is just busy with their love life or their family. And you follow these four boys growing together and then somewhat apart. It's a very enchanting tale especially for me when I was around 15 or 14 years old when I read it. Since I love and loved the Beatles, it was almost enough for me that they mentioned Beatles a lot during the book. That was enough to keep me going. But I enjoyed reading about the boys also growing up. And they grew up in Oslo, which I did not have a connection with. I now live in Oslo, so I know a lot more about the places they went. 
And I think if I read the story today, it would have bigger meaning, both in that I know the place, but also in the political side of the book. And I know more about the history evolving the boys in the book. This is a book that is written for grown-ups, but I think it might be a good thing that I read it when I was 15 as well, because it's more engaging reading about older kids than yourself. And it would have to be, because reading 600 pages for me as a 15 year old and then reading the books that came after it, it's quite an achievement and I felt really good when I did it. Some people say that this book captures what it's like to be growing up at that time and catches the spirit of a generation and for me growing up with the Beatles in a sense would have been the dream. Nevertheless, a very important book in my life and a book that I will always remember and might be rereading at some point. If you're not familiar with Norwegian authors, Lars Oppe Christensen is one of the big names and he has a lot of books and I think they are written in a good way, so I can recommend them. Number three on this very small list is maybe my favorite book of all time. But here's the thing, it's an abridged version and the original book is about 1300 pages, so I don't really know what to do now. The original is also not translated to Norwegian, so that might be a problem, I don't know. But nevertheless, it's The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas, published in 1844. And this is a very not so good looking book, but the content is all right. I read this while I was on holiday around four years ago. And this was one of the books that when I finished reading the book, I thought I'm going to read so many books now. And I didn't, as usual, but it just wooed me. It just made me want to read so much. And then I picked up Charles Dickens' Hard Times and I lost my lust for reading more. Can't say that I gave that book a chance, but it did nevertheless. So what is this book about? Well, a man is wrongly imprisoned. In the prison, he learns about treasure on the island of Monte Cristo. He decides to break out of prison and find this treasure and then to take revenge on all the people that have wronged him throughout the years. And it's just the perfect revenge story because there are so many twists and turns and so many things happen all the time and there's just not a dull moment. And this is where I wonder if the unabridged version will be just as exciting because this really did it for me at least. You that watches my videos might know that I love books with plots that keep evolving and where a lot of things happen and this book might be the best book in the world for that purpose exactly and that's why I love it. I don't know how much more I can say because there are so many twists and turns I want you all to discover for yourself and if you read the unabridged version I will do it as well. That is a promise. Maybe just not this year. Why is this an important book for me? Well, it's an important book because at the time I didn't think that I could read 500 pages and I just did it in such a fast pace and I loved every minute of it. It was not boring at all. I really enjoyed sitting down with the book and reading. I would rather read the book than do anything else and that was quite unusual. So it's one of those books that I really just think that, well, reading is for me. But then I stopped reading, so it did not help, maybe. But maybe it's one of those books that just works in the background and makes me think that reading is fun. Now I have several books that I like reading and think is fun, so it just keeps on getting better. One might say that this book made me a believer in big books. Now over to the last book on the list, and if I should recommend you all one Norwegian book to pick up, it's this one, because it's a Norwegian book I really, really love. And it's The Birds by Tarja Vesos, here with the Norwegian copy. This was published in 1957, and this is really what you might call a modern classic. Some of you might know Karl Ove Knausko, which is a famous Norwegian author, and on the front here he says that this is the best Norwegian novel ever written. And I have to agree, because this is a terrific book. I made a review of The Ice Palace, which is also a book of Taya Vesos. And the reason I read that book is, of course, because I read this book. And I read this book 
about a half year before I started this channel and it was sort of the last book I read before I decided that reading is something I should continue doing. So what is the story about? It's about a man called Mattis. He lives on a farm in a small place in Norway together with his sister. Mattis is mentally disabled and the book is basically him reflecting on the life with his sister and the life he is living and the things he wants to accomplish but doesn't feel he can accomplish and in general how hard it could be being different. And it's just written so beautifully and the way Tarja Vesos describes his inner feelings and thoughts is just so magical in a way. Just so simple. So I would say that it's very simplistically written but it hits you very hard. I don't think I'm the best at describing people's writing styles but I think Tarja Vesos is a person that writes in a way that I just immediately think of him when I read it. And then if I should take it a step further I think of Ewan Fosse which I think also has a similar writing style as Tarja Vesos. Through the eyes of Mattis, our main character, you really get to experience the world as he experiences it and it's just a beautiful story even though life isn't always easy for Mattis. One of the things that really stuck with me from the book is when Mattis is invited to a neighbor where they pull the weeds from the ground and he does not really get invited to these kinds of happenings that much even though for other people it's just boring work. For Mattis it's an uh, experience but he also spends his time wondering if he is really the weed in the world. And these kinds of settings and the way he reflects around it just makes it very very sad at times but also powerful. When I compare this to The Count of Monte Cristo of course this book is on the complete opposite side of the scale and many of you might think that I only read books with an exciting plot and only enjoy those books at least but this book is a very quiet book I would call it and not, not a lot of things happen but the things that happen really sticks with you. That's why I love it. It's also a very short read so it's around 200 pages, very easily read pages. I would say that if you're going to read one Norwegian book I would read this book and I feel that is kind of a bold statement but not because this book is great and his writing is great and yeah there you have it. To sum it up this was a real sausage fest. But the good news is that I think that will change in the future. The funny thing about this list is that three out of four authors from this list is Norwegian. And that is quite funny when you think about me making videos about why not read Norwegian authors. But there you have it, a statistical anomaly. But these were the books that have been most impactful to my life and to my reading and my thought processes. And I do think that I need time to understand which books are going to be impactful after I read them and I hope to find more of these books in the future. So which books have been most impactful to you and your reading? Comment below and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye!